Welcome to the Couch GM Podcast. Really excited for today's episode as I have on Ty Pete, who is a shortstop in the Seattle Mariners organization, was a first round draft pick in the 2023 MLB draft. We have a great conversation talking through his upbringing, how he got into baseball, how he got into various other sports, as well as getting into a bit of what he does off the field, including streaming to Twitch and other social medias. If you'd like to support the Couch GM brand, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. I'll have a link in the description of this video that takes you to all of my social social medias. I also have Couch GM merch available. On that link is also the Glance LED panel. If you're a sports fan, highly recommend it for your home office. Use discount code COUCHGM for 10% off and it'll help support the brand. Also, if you didn't know, I'm a mortgage loan originator during the day. So if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, reach out to me as well. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, welcome to the Couch GM podcast. I'm excited for today's conversation as today we have on Ty Pete, who is a first round draft pick for the Seattle Mariners in the 2023 MLB draft. So first off, Ty, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. So I want to get into, you know, your your year, the MLB draft, uh, t- something about your streaming, but let, let's start back with your growing up. And so h- how did you get into sports in general? How did you find that passion with baseball? Walk us through your upbringing. Yeah, so sports in general, um, you know, I, I grew up in an athletic family. So my dad, he played college uh, college basketball, played baseball too. So um, I always played sports. My first sport was actually golf. Um, started golfing when I was about two years old. And then I picked up baseball, um, which then I picked up basketball and then soccer. So I played all sports, but my main two sports were, you know, was golf. It was golf and baseball. And I started picking up basketball. So then I dropped golf because it like started messing up my baseball swing. Um, so I played those two basketball and baseball for till my, my sophomore year. That's when I stopped playing basketball. Uh, that's when I started playing baseball full time because my dad made me play a different sport just so I didn't get tired out of baseball. That makes sense. So yeah. I started doing that. And then after I told my dad, I was like, look, like I'm, I'm playing baseball for like for good. Cause I, I never liked basketball. I only played basketball just because like it was fun. Um, for a little bit, but like organized basketball, it's not not what I like to do. Um, but then since then, I just started playing baseball, kept kept playing, and now I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. So so growing up, was there a certain team that you that you idolized or watched? Um, any players that you tried to uh, kind of make your game after? Yeah, so I, I was actually a huge Angels fan, like a okay. massive Angels fan, and um, I was always a Trout fan. Uh, Angelson Simmons, Justin Upton, all those guys. So like that was my team. Um, it's really hard to be an Angels fan, but I was an Angels fan. Um, and then after I got drafted, I was like, you know, I can't be, I can't be an Angels fan anymore. In the division, um, dude. Yeah. yeah, but every day it got harder to be an Angels fan. That's like the hardest. <laughs> People ask me, like, you know, what's the hardest thing you've done? It's probably be an Angels fan. That's awesome. So, w- were there any shortstops in particular? You, you mentioned Mike Trout. Were yeah. there any shortstops? So that was growing up, but like right now, my favorite player for around about since I was like 11 years old has been Lindor. Okay. Um, Francisco Lindor has been my favorite player. I went to, for my, my, uh, 12th birthday, my mom took me to a, a Angels game and I was, I was so excited, but it was in Ohio when we, uh, when we watched Cleveland and ever, once I saw Lindor play, like after that day or uh, after that game, like I was, I was a Lindor fan for a long time. Is it his, his fielding ability, his switch hitting ability? It's, it's kind of how he plays. Uh, yeah. I kind of watch how he plays, how he plays loose, how he has fun. Um, I still have never met him, so that's like my that's like on my bucket list. I just want to like sit down and talk to him. But he's my he's my biggest my biggest fan. Big fan. Here you go. So you start playing baseball. Obviously, you play. It sounds like every sport. Um, I see in your vlogs you got the golf bag in the in the trunk there. Um, so walk us through you know growing up through baseball. When at what point did you start to see that hey this might be something that you could do long term? And then also go over the uh, 2018 Little League World Series that you were a part of? Yeah. Um, so when I was like eight years old, eight or nine years old, that's when I really wanted to like focus on baseball just because I knew like, you know, this, I've always, I never had the intentions of just playing for fun. Like uh, whenever I play something, like I want to do it, like like I want to be like good at it. Like I don't want to like just play for fun. So um, baseball has always been like my my main setting goal. Um, just golf is, I, I, that's what I do for fun, but I, I don't, I still don't want to be bad. Um, but the world series, that was, a that was when it like first opened up where I was like, Whoa, like, okay, this is a lot different. Um, 
especially like a little kid. I was like 12 years old playing in in front of thousands of people at the time, which I thought it was only thousands of people. Um, I didn't know that many people watching on like TV and stuff. So it, it was a lot different. So when I got back home, you know, people were like, oh, like, congratulations. And I was like, congratulations, what? Like, <laughs> do you know I went? But it, I guess it was a huge thing. Um, and it's always been a huge thing. Like, now I know, like, yeah, it's pretty big. Everyone watches it. Um, so that's when I kind of, like, realized, all right, maybe I should have done a little bit better, first of all. But second, I realized, like, okay, a lot of people watch this sport. Um, and I can really make something out of this. So, you know, my impact on people, that's kind of what I want to do. I want to impact um, kids my age because when I was watching the game, you know, I'd watch these old, older guys play. And um, I realized I, I literally watch every step they do. Like, my little brother, he watches everything I do. So um, for, for people, to for little kids to do the same thing to me, um, I want to really impact them. Absolutely. That's great. So after, you know, Little League, you were only 12 years old at that time. You know, you have a lot of room for development moving forward. Um, at what point did you get into travel ball and and those next levels? Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing travel ball for a while. So I was about eight years old, um, eight, nine years old. That's really when everything, like, kind of started. But I've been playing travel ball for a long time. And then I went to my – um, I played for the South Dakota Tribe when I was like 11, like 10, 11, 12, and then 13U, I went to home plate, which is by my, by my house. And then from then, that's when we started traveling. I really started traveling 12 years old. We went to New York, uh, Vegas, like all these like crazy places playing baseball. Um, that's kind of when it was like super competitive. And that's when I had my desires, like, like I'm not going to college for this. I'm not going like, I'm, I'm my goal is to, to get to the top, like this is my goals and I'm going to do this. So that's, you know, that's when teachers would ask me like, you know, what do you want to do and grow up? And I was like, Oh, I'm going to be a major league baseball player. Um, like it was never like, I'm going to, I want to be, a, I want to be, or like, I'm, it was like, I'm going to be, cause that, that was my goal. Absolutely. So at, at what point did you start to realize that, Hey, you're one of the best players on the field. Um, and then at what point did you start to see those scouts show up and have people talk to you and start to see that, you might be getting some, you know, attention nationally. Yeah. Um, well, realize the best player in the field. I still don't even know. If I'm, <laughs> I, I'm still like, I might like, like having the mentality where like, there's always going to be someone better than you. So you just got to keep chasing. But um, when I realized the scouts, I didn't realize until like sophomore year, like sophomore year, uh, junior year. Like I, I never, cause I never looked in the stands. Um, but I, I get calls. I, I have, that's when I started getting calls for like my recruiting process and stuff. And they'd be like, yeah, you know, we, we see you play. I'm like, what, when did you <laughs> see me play? Like <laughs> when, and they're like, oh, we're always watching. So my, my dad would always be like, you know, you never know who's watching you. Um, so that was real. Like, I really didn't know who was watching, but apparently, you know, there's a lot of guys in the stands now. I think my senior high school is when I really started like focusing in and turning it on, just having fun, like. I didn't really care at that point. It was almost like, I'm just here to play. Like I'm not here to like impress. Yeah. And I mean, those scouts, they even watch you warming up pregame to see what right. kind of guy you are on the field, off the field. Um, at what point did you start to hit that growth spurt to where, um, I mean, it looked like in high school, you got up to like 93 miles an hour on the mound, maybe even higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. I hit 95. I hit 95 at uh, Team USA, like a Team USA thing. Man. Um, but then I like, I don't even like pitching. Like I, <laughs> I don't even like pitching. I just got up there and threw. Like, that's when I started developing pitches, though. Um, I started throwing a sinker, a cutter, a slider, stuff like that. But, like, I never, like, really enjoyed pitching. I always was a hitter. Like, mm -hmm. hitter is what I wanted to do. So, started, that's, high school was, high school was fun. Like, it's because if my team needed help, like, I'll get up there and throw. That's fine. But I never want to be, like, become a PO or anything like that. Yeah. But it was fun because, like, you can do both. Like, it wasn't, like, a restriction. Like, if I wanted to get up there and throw, I can get up there and throw. If I wanted to hit, I can hit, like, lead off or whatever I wanted. Like, it was fun. And so I'm how, my friends. How, how did you learn those different pitches? Did you utilize YouTube and other resources like that? Or was it guys on your team that you looked at? Uh, pitch we, have, we, have a pitching, we have a pitching coach, but it was okay. mainly, like, just watching. Like, just watching people. Like, I would watch Stroman pitch. Um... Like that's that's who I would model like my my kind of like I guess I don't even know what it's for for baseball for hitting would be like stance. Yeah, that's how much I don't know about motion. Pitching. Yeah, motion. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would I would model it after Stroman, and I would just kind of yeah. watch how he grips the ball. Like I that was a video where he like showed all of his like pitch grips, and I was like, oh, 
Yes. <laughs> so I'd watch all the grips. I started throwing a sinker after I started watching him, uh, his follow through. And I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty good boys with his brother Jaden. So it was just cool. I was like, you know, like I, I modeled my pitching after him and then I then I stopped pitching and then um I just model baseball, like my swings. Um I, that's what I do. All I do is watch videos, watch videos of other players hit, watch um even like some righties, like it might not even look I just watch the look at mechanics and stuff. Definitely. And yeah, I mean Strowman, he's got balls moving every which way, that sinker, yeah. cutter, everything. Um being a, a two way athlete, shortstop and pitcher, those are both two positions to where you use a lot of your body. Um, I'm curious if there was any potential drawbacks or any benefits to being a two way player throughout high school. You know, like if you pitched one day, how many days do you have to have off if any yeah. a shortstop? So that that was the that was the worst part, I think. For me personally, just because, you know, I never got to play the field. Like summer ball, uh, my, my coach was really like, he was really fragile with my arm, um, which I, I really appreciate that. But, you know, he, he would say, okay, you can pitch um, the first back game, but you're not playing the game before or the game after that. Like you're not throwing the game before or after. So I would just hit. I would just hit like the game before, the game after. And if we lose, we're done. Like then I didn't even get to play the field at all. So like I would just pitch like first game of bracket, um, or I'll pitch like the first pool game and then not play the game after that or the game after that, just to get my arm a rest. Um, so that's where I was like, hey, you know what? I'm done. Like I'm my senior year. I was like, I'm not pitching because I want to play the field. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to be a PODH. That's what they call me a PODH. <laughs> I don't want to be a PODH. So I played the field my senior year. Um, and some scouts were like, Oh, like you can play the field. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I mainly do. Um, but I, I I enjoyed it because I enjoy pitching still. It's it's competitive up there, um, but man, hitting is just that's a whole different thing. Like that's where that's where I, I enjoy. Awesome. And then so you know you start getting recruited throughout high school. At what point do you commit to Georgia Tech and take that next step? Yeah, so I committed my sophomore year. Um, my sophomore year was it was kind of the opening point where you know I realized all these all these guys are watching and. I realized kind of it wasn't pressure, but, you know, it was definitely it wasn't just I was not playing with anything on my shoulder. Um, but I committed because technology there at Tech, um, that could have like I think if I went to Tech, it would have put me in a place where I would have gotten stronger. Um, I would have understand understood my swing better than ever. The coaching staff, the, um, Ramsey, Coach Hall, like I, I had a really close relationship with them. So I think it would have been a great place. But. Still, like, that wasn't my goal. Um, but Georgia Tech, I, that's why I committed because – and it was accessible. Like, everything they had, all the all the technology they had was unbelievable. Absolutely. And then – so you played for Team USA? Yeah. No, I, so I did the, the um, PDP, and then I made yeah. trials, but then I, I couldn't go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, walk me through the, the MLB Combine, that entire process, you know, the workouts, the interviews – just that experience in general. Yeah, that was fun. So that that was fun, and I enjoyed kind of everything. Um, I had my my expectations going, and it just like it was way better. It was it was more fun. Like the experience was better. Like the actual baseball was a normal combine, but like the experience of going to that and seeing you know all all my guys, all like my baseball like boys, and um, you know I had the thought like like I'm I've always been big into like making you making videos and stuff. Um, so I was like, you know what? I might, I'm gonna make a video like behind the scenes. Kind of, I, I didn't even know what was happening. So I was like, it's kind of like it was literally like behind the scenes. Like I had no idea what was out, what I was doing. Yeah. Um. So I ended up making that video, and then it went pretty viral. Like everyone enjoyed it. So I think it was like it was fun because people got to see what I saw, you know, and people got to see like kind of what I did in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's always cool, you know, as a fan to be able to see behind the scenes, and then for all of the younger kids that are growing up playing baseball you know, striving to make it to the next level to be able to see what that looks like is pretty cool. So right. how, how did you get into creating videos and is, are there any inspirations that you're trying to go after? So I've always, I've literally always been like a technology, like, like I've always loved videos and editing videos and stuff like that. Um, but I just never had like the audience to do it for, mm -hmm. you know, I never had like the time to kind of sit down and try to grind that out but it's it's a grind dude i'm watching these guys like it's a grind it is. so yeah. I, recently i started i started streaming i've always streamed but like streamed with nobody just because like i would only stream like a couple of people that i played with 
But now, like, I'm streaming and, you know, I'm playing with a bunch of guys, letting them ask questions. I'll answer whatever questions they have, like, kind of the process. Because when I was a kid, I, I didn't have anyone to ask questions to. Um, so I would I would just try to, like, scroll as far as I can, like, looking up these videos, looking up days in the life, looking up kind of what they, like, do and stuff. So yeah. now that, like, I feel like I'm given the opportunity, like, and it's fun for me to answer those questions. Because, mm -hmm. like, I remember when I was a kid and I had those questions, like, it's fun to actually answer the questions of these guys. And um, sometimes, like, I'll open up my game and I'll play with them. And um, I'll cool. play with other people while I'm answering other questions. Like, I'm enjoying it all. My best friends are, too. They play with me, too. But I think it's I think it's great. And, you know, the reason why I'm doing all these videos is because, like I said, like, when I was a kid, um, I would always look for these type of videos. Like, exactly. I would always look, like, what, what do these guys really do? Or how what is it really like? Um, so I'm trying to produce that. So kids can realize like, you know what it is and maybe it'll motivate them a little bit more to reach their goals. That's great. Do, do you just stream on Twitch or have you tried YouTube lives? I haven't tried YouTube live, but I, I'm going to, I stream on Twitch and TikTok okay. just because those are like, those are two platforms, which I, I, I know pretty well. Yeah. Um, but I, I could start looking at YouTube live, but I feel like I'm trying to keep my YouTube kind of like baseball related. Yeah. Um, I don't want to path off and like gaming and stuff, but I really enjoy it. Cause I play a lot of video games, like my whole family, girlfriend, dude, I play a lot, a lot <laughs> of video games. So I was like, you know what, while I'm playing these video games, why don't I just like stream to people so like I can still play and like, I can answer these questions at the same time. Yeah. All dude. right. What's your, what's your top three games? Uh, dude, uh, OG Fortnite. Not now, not now for <laughs> I hate now Fortnite. OG Fortnite, And then MLB the show, obviously just because, you know, I play with my card. It's fun. There you go. Um, but then right now, dude, GTA five, I'm trying to get trying to get hyped up back to GTA six. Yeah, that'd be cool when it comes yeah, out. Dude, GTA six would be crazy. <laughs> now getting back to uh that process before the draft, I, I see on one of your videos that you were friends with Johnny Permello beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. So he was my Can roommate. That relationship? Yeah. So Johnny was my roommate in Team USA, the PDP thing. We were there for about two and a half weeks um in Cary, North Carolina in the middle of nowhere, like we were in a hotel together and we first met, um, we actually first met back in the tournament where he played with the Canes team. Uh, we played against each other. Uh, we met and then we met at the hotel. We started, we, we came really close in that two weeks. Like those two weeks, we became really, really close friends. We kept in touch. Um, and then after like the draft night, so draft night, there was this guy on Twitter. He was leaking all of them. Like, I don't know how he, his name is Joe Doyle. You, I mean, everyone probably yeah, yeah. knows Joe Doyle. He, he, like, he, he got them all so fast, like 10 minutes maybe before the pick. So after I got picked, because I knew when I knew when I got picked around the Braves pick, I think it was like the 21st pick or something. Um, Joe Doyle like tweeted out that Johnny got picked to the Mariners. And I was like, what? So we went, I went crazy. Me and my dad were going crazy because we both know that we both knew that we were already close. So I called Johnny and he didn't answer because we were uh both like an it. agent but uh, yeah, yeah yeah but afterwards i called him and he answered and he was like bro no way because he didn't know he didn't know that i got picked until after he saw it, and his dad went crazy so then like <laughs> once we got to seattle um or once we got to arizona um dude we like immediately roomed in we've been rooming for about four months now four or five months um but that's my boy like that's actually like my boy um he came he came and got my car with me he, um, I think I'm actually in a few weeks, I might go up there and visit him, work out with him for about a week before we go back out in Arizona. But yeah, we've, we've all gotten so close. Me, Colt, um, Aiden and Johnny, like we've all like gotten really close. So like that bond that we all have, like we do everything together. Yeah. So walk me through, you know, you get drafted, you can go through the draft, draft day, what that looked like for you specifically. And then after the fact, you know, you get drafted, do they fly you out to Seattle the next day? And what's that entire experience like? Yeah. So draft day, um, me, my best friend from home, uh, my dad and my dad's best friend, my, my godfather, we all, they were all here and we all went out to golf actually in the morning. Um, we golfed, we played 18, uh, up until like four o'clock and then we ended up going back home. Uh, I think I hit that morning too. So I hit the morning golfed and then got back home and I, I just kind of wanted to be chill. Like I didn't want to like, I don't want everyone to be at my house. Like all these expectations and then I, I didn't go where I wanted to, or, you know, I just wanted like my close friends. So I had two of my best friends. Um, I had just my, my intermediate, like immediate family. 
Um, and I sat in my dad's office the whole time. Like I was like, I wasn't stressed, but I was just like, can we get this over with? Like, just anxious. The pick, dude, the picks were going by so slow and I was waiting. Like, I didn't want to call. I was, I, I was expecting like my, uh, my agents told me I was expecting a call around like the 15th, 16th, like the 20th pick. Like that's when I was expecting a call. Okay. And I was like, it got to like the 17th and I was like, <laughs> I'm not even getting drafted. It's done. And then after after like I would every like text every single text I would like check my phone so fast and I thought it was gonna be like a, like in the movies like you know how, like you know how it pops up like the logo pop- I thought it was, <laughs> I don't know why so when I got a call from my agent I was like bro this isn't the guy I was looking for <laughs> and I answered and then he was like you know what he was like um hey you ready to go for more than seven dollars and I was like yeah <laughs> so we made the call um it was me and my two best friends in the room when I got the call told me like who I was going to. Um, and that's like, that's why I wanted to go to, like, I wanted to go to the Mariners because they were, they were my top team. Um, and like my mom's a massive, like each row fan and huge Griffey go. fan. So yeah. I think, I think my mom was probably the most happy out of all of us, but, um, and I just love, like, I love everyone, everyone in the organization. So being able to get that call, um, I, I could say it's a little bit lucky for me just because like, I, I got where I wanted, like, I wanted to go here and like, I finished my goal and my goal is to go at this team. So, awesome. um, just kind of going through it all. Like it was, it was amazing. Like I didn't believe it until I heard the name. Like I wasn't like, okay. Uh, on my TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then once I saw my, once I saw my little, my little mu- like mugshot picture, uh, <laughs> I was like, dang, <laughs> like, this is crazy. Cause I was and my phone started blowing up. Like people that people I didn't even know watch baseball. We're like, well, congratulations. Like, I just saw you on TV. I was like, what are you doing watching? What are you doing watching this? Like, <laughs> but it was cool, man. Like coaches, um, yeah, friends, friends from school, teachers, stuff like that. Like, um, it was it was pretty cool. And after that, I wanted to leave now. Like, I wanted to leave that day mm-hmm. just so I can go out and um, go out and see what it looked like. And I think I left like four days after. Okay. Went to Seattle, packed my bags. I packed everything. Like, I packed for Arizona. So okay. I went to Seattle um and what what experience like it was it was crazy i i got um my favorite part was actually talking to the players like it wasn't it wasn't like seeing the the big tower you know that massive tower yeah it wasn't like seeing that. yeah the, oh yeah, yeah yeah that was yeah, terrifying yeah. terrifying <laughs> going up there it wasn't that the fish market was cool but the gun wall was disgusting um but everything everything was cool but just talking to the players um i talked to colton wong for a while i talked to julio i talked to jp so like I feel like that was cool. And the coolest part for me though, was the fans, like seeing the fans on the street, like they knew who I was mm-hmm. and like, they knew like why I was there. That was pretty cool. Uh, and then was that the first time stepping on a field on a major league field or have you done that before? No. Nah, so I hit, I hit like, um, I hit in truest, uh, Tropicana. Like I hit all these big league fields just like, cause it was like pro workouts. Gotcha. But that was the first time I was in like the Seattle field. Yeah. Yeah. In T Mobile. But that was, dude, that was crazy. T Mobile's yeah. huge. It's crazy. Yeah. And seeing that skyline in the background, you yeah, know, yeah, the Seahawks yeah. play right across the street. It's a, it's a great city. It, it's yeah, really yeah. cool up there. Yeah. I got, I got like a picture of like the, the skyline above my bed. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah. At, so you, you get up there to Seattle. Uh, you start to talk with Colt and with Johnny. Um, are there any players that you've been in touch with after the fact, major league players that have kind of bounced ideas off of you or you've gotten advice from? Yeah, I talked to Julio a lot. Um, we play we play video games together. Okay. And then I talked to, I think, Julio and then Logan Gilbert reached out to me, just kind of like congratulated me and telling me okay. motivational stuff. But other than that, kind of um, just kind of been with the other players, like the other affiliates and stuff. Yeah. Um, but me colt johnny and aiden like we literally we literally hung out with each other like, every single day for the past like 10 weeks like we got so aiden's a scratch golfer so we just pick him up on our team <laughs> we just pick him. Up? not aiden i think i'm i think i'm plus i'm like 84 85s okay that's all aiden's like like he'll go out guys i haven't golfed in so long 70 <laughs> 79 like 78s i'm like all right Man. bro yeah. I'm trying, I'm just trying to like, that's my thing. If I wasn't a pro baseball player, like I wanted to be a pro golfer. Cause that'd be so sick. Oh, that'd be so <laughs> cool to be good at golf. 
Yeah. And I mean, with, with the baseball season, you're able to, during the off season, you can go down to Arizona. You could still golf around pretty much year round. So dude, Arizona golf is crazy. So <laughs> much different than Georgia golf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So walk me through, uh, you leave Seattle, you head down to Arizona for rookie ball. What's that first, first experience? Yeah. So I think that's when I realized like kind of the bus ride to, um, to the airport, to Arizona, I was like, whoa, like I kind of just like left my entire family. Like my little brother, dude, he had no idea like what was happening. So like having to leave, having to leave my little brother, my dad, all that. I got, I thought, I was like, you know, it's fine. Like I'm going to see them a couple months. But then I, after, I think after I left, I was like, dang. But then like once I got there, I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> like I'm here to play baseball. It's whatever. Yeah. So I see my locker um, and I, I immediately, I was like, all right, let's start going. We got to start playing now. And um, me, Colt, we were, just, we were anxious for, like, two weeks because, like, they didn't activate us. They had to, like, let us, like, kind of get back in the groove because we even played in, like, months. But I was like, I don't care. Get me out there. Like, let me face somebody. Um, so it was it was cool. Like, the whole experience, ACL ball, um, playing in front of, like, literally nobody. Like, that, I think that was my the best part, like, playing just in front of nobody. Games. Yeah, like, just kind of playing, like, playing baseball. But once once I stepped in front of fans – it was so cool. <laughs> like I've never played in front of like that many people other than like the world series, like, like people that are actually interested in baseball. Mm-hmm. Like that's my I'm, like affiliates, like the minor leagues, like people are actually interested in baseball. Um, so being able to like play in front of these guys that know, like know kind of what they're watching. And um, now all these things are coming out, like these car, my cards and stuff. It's like, it's crazy seeing my cards in stores and like, it's like all like a dream come true. So now I just got to yeah. keep, keep playing on and kind of keep going keep going up through the the ranks and stuff yeah I've, I've always been curious i actually collect some sports card myself um at what point do they drag you into a room and hand you a sharpie and say hey sign 100 of these cards the it's these not even 100 dude it's a thousand like a thousand i signed i signed a thousand about two weeks ago with wow. tops and uh he sat right in my living room upstairs and i was like let's get it over with <laughs> signed a thousand right there finished about like an hour and a half but wow the dude they send like little stickers so it's like little stickers um this is for like different deals like panini and leaf and stuff and you gotta sign those little tiny stickers and there's like about five thousand of them and you should, oh, it's really just cool. like constant constant and um you gotta do it um i finished it over spans of weeks because we were in playoffs so i was like i can't get this done like while i'm in playoffs right now so yeah. i would do it after playoffs and it's like a folder it's like it's like you're in school again <laughs> like basically i was like like um, my girlfriend, she's in college right now. She's like, I have all this homework. I was like, I got to sign 5,000 little tiny <laughs> stickers. And dude, it's like basically I'm in school again, but it's fun though, because like, you know, what, like, like, you know, what's happening. Like, I know like this little sticker is going to go on a card and it's going to be pretty cool. Or like, I know that I'm signing an actual card. That's my, like my players on it. Like it's sick. Yeah. So did you, uh, cool. did you think through your signature? Like, you know, when I become a big league player or a baseball player, I want my signature to look like this, or was it just kind of whatever you had that day? I had my signature like done when I was in like like my sophomore year. Like I would sit in the back of like Spanish class and yep. just like write like <laughs> my signature. And I had I would just go through so many, but I just copied what my dad did. Like my dad has the same. He does he does uh, EP, so I just did TP. And then for like I had to get it quicker. Like it, it could not be that long, so I just do TP now. Just because, and that's what people call me. People call me TP. Okay. Um. So it's just it's just easier, and it, it doesn't look too bad. So like I, I I like I'd rather have a car that looks good than like it's just like some sloppy like T or whatever. But I like it, and uh, I've had it for a while. So whatever gets you through those five thousand as quick as possible. <sighs> I might just start doing one solid line across all five. There you go. Just a, just a line. Yeah. <laughs> just one solid line. <laughs> so you get into rookie ball in Arizona. You go through that experience, then you get promoted up to Modesto. What was it like heading up to? Modesto and, and that level of competition did you see a difference there yeah definitely um I think the most difference was the fans um obviously it was like there's nobody in ACL but then you step in Modesto and people know people know who you are and um people have these high expectations for you but it's definitely a difference like we got the call or it wasn't even called it was like a meeting so we met we met um with our manager and he was like yeah you guys are going to Modesto we're like dang all right an hour later, we our flight was like an hour later, and I was like, I have nothing packed. Like me and Colt were scrambling for stuff. He was like, Colt came in my room. He was like, Yo, we're leaving like an hour. I was like, What? 
So we left and we landed there, got in a hotel, and that next day we were out um, on the field. Um, we sat that game, and then the next the next day we played. Um, and from there, we won like 26 games in a row. It was crazy. Really? Yeah, it was like unbelievable. Like I, I didn't even think – I was just like, is this supposed to be like happening? Like that was – because our first thing was San Jose. We played San Jose. Our second game we faced like Joe Ross, like, like six-time All-Star. And we were like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, all right. And then we – from there, and we faced Dylan Cummin our first game, which then he like – some crazy story about him just happened like yesterday. But – I think he said it's like, yeah, like robbed at gunpoint. Car accident? yeah, no, he, robbed, robbed, like, he was robbed at gunpoint. Yeah. And then that guy got in a crash. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan did. So that's crazy. But we faced him my first AB. That was my first AB. Um, and then after that played six series or like four, four series end up winning the championship game. Now we go back out next, next uh, March or next April. It was okay. crazy. Dude. It was the playoff is Playoffs is like I've never experienced anything like that. That was crazy because you know I've had playoff baseball like high school baseball, but you know it's just the moms and the the aunts and uncles like. But that was like that was cool. Like I enjoyed that. Awesome, yeah. That energy really thriving off of that and yeah. playing into your game. Yeah. So then uh, you go through that spot. Well, actually, we have to go back a second. We of course we have to talk about grand slams and back to back innings. What, what yeah. was that like? Um, we were down like eight. We were down like eight, I think. Or it might have been seven. It might have been seven. And um, I was in like – I was in a bad like, – I, I, I couldn't find my swing. I just broke my bat. I was upset. I was like <laughs> – that was because I broke my, my Rawlings bat, which at the time I was using like a Rawlings, like the one I got from like PG All-American. Um, so I broke that. Gave it to like some old lady in the sands. And then I came back, and I, I had no – I didn't even know – I didn't know what the score was. Like we were, I was just focusing on like kind of getting a barrel. I swung at first pitch and like barreled it. And I was like, Oh, that's gone. Like, that's <laughs> way gone. So I didn't even think I didn't even, I was like, okay, it's my first run. I didn't even think that I was just thinking, let me just get her on the bases. Like we need to put some more runs up. So after I got back, Cole was like, dude, you matched that. So <laughs> after went back in the dugout, I was talking to Aiden for a little bit, went to the locker room, put a uh, pack of seeds in my mouth, came back out, uh, and I was up again. I was like, oh, I'm, in, I'm on deck. So went back on deck. I had no idea. I had no idea it was bases loaded. Um, all my manager said was just put the ball in play. Mm -hmm. So first pitch, they took out they took out a righty, put a lefty in for me. Um, and I went back, looked at the book. All I saw was he threw like 90% sliders. I was like, all right, I'm just going to sit on a slider. First pitch, I just swung. <laughs> I just swung. I saw. I at least saw it float in, and I just swung. Put a swing on it. I had no idea where the ball went, which is funny. I had no idea where the ball went. <laughs> like I thought. I thought it was like center field, like maybe like like a little like line drive. I I didn't know it went right field. And then I heard Bryce um, Eldridge and right field like tracking for the wall. So I was like, whoa. So I started running, and then it was gone. The umpire was like, it's gone. And I was like, what? I was like, what? <laughs> was that? Was that have you hit a grand slam in the past or were those your yeah. first? Yeah, okay. no, I've hit I've hit grand slams, which I think in an interview after that I said I've never hit two home runs in a game, which is a lie because I, I hit two home runs in high school, like in okay. uh against like one of our rival teams. I completely forgot about that. I literally had nothing. I was so shocked at what happened. But people were I didn't think it was a big like a big of a deal. Cause I, I, I thought people like I thought that was like a not like a normal thing, but I knew like yeah, it's been done before. <laughs> You but don't see I that every day, back to back innings. I also see that's the thing. I didn't know it was back to back innings. I thought it was like I thought it was the uh the inning after. Gotcha. But dude, I I was just trying to like I I'm not gonna say I wasn't in the game, but I was just trying to focus like on barreling a ball. Um, because the score was like eight to two. Um, and then we won the game. And then we like went on to win like 20 more, which is insane. But yeah, I just I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And then like people started calling me. Um, I think I had a call. My manager was like, hey, you got a call with, like, Sports Illustrated. I was like, what? <laughs> didn't even find out this fast. That's yeah, awesome. that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't happen every day. And especially, you know, the first one was off a righty. I think that was to left center. Yeah, yeah, yeah left center. The lefty comes in, hangs a breaking ball first pitch. You take it uh, over right field. That kind of brings me to another question. You know, the whole handiness thing to where – 
they always try to pitch lefties versus lefties or they bring in a righty versus a righty. Yeah. Do you see that as a difference at the plate? I or... used to. Okay. I used to. And it, it used to be, I feel like it's like a mental thing. Like physically, yeah, the, it comes out a different angle, but it's like a mental thing. Like you start hearing like, oh, lefty, lefty is impossible when you're a kid. Um, so like they, it'll get in your head and yeah. it gets in your head fast because it got in my head when, like my junior year, it got in my head bad. And I could not hit a lefty to save my life. Like, it was just all mental. Um, but don't get me wrong. Like, there are some lefties. There was a lefty for the Rockies that we faced. It's impossible. Like, <laughs> he was, like, coming from behind us. So, like, we, we couldn't have hit it. Like, his his arm slot was, like, on the on the left of us. So I was like, yeah, this didn't even look right. It didn't even look right. So, Man. but there's some there are some guys that, like, and it I think it is harder. Like, people say, like, righty righty is the same thing. No, not even close. Like it's not, but there is a difference. Um, but it's all mental. Like it really is. Like righty righty, you you grew up seeing that, but you didn't grow up seeing lefty lefty. I think that's why people think it's like different. Um, but it is different. Like it's not it's not the same thing. Yeah, well, clearly it didn't slow you down on that one. <laughs> right. Um, so heading into twenty twenty four, what what's your main focus for development if there is anything in particular that you're trying to focus on? Um, explosiveness agility um and definitely my speed i'm just trying to trying to up the speed as fast as i can um i got hopped down at by johnny last um last camp just playing this little like catch the flag game hawked okay. me down so i can't <laughs> i can't let that happen again um but i just got to get faster um i gotta get faster i gotta get more explosive um and i think maintaining kind of maintaining my swing if that makes sense like kind of keeping my same swing and my same mechanics Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's a that's a big part of it. Uh, I used to have a problem where I would change my swing a lot or I would see someone that, you know, someone swings working, I would try to do what they're doing, yeah. um, especially with the, the older guys like Harper, Seeger, you know, all these guys. Um, it's it's harder because I don't know what they're thinking. Like I can I can imitate their swing. Um, I can definitely I can definitely show you what their swing looks like, um, but I don't know what they're thinking mentally. So I'll never be able to perfect their swing. Um, I only know what I'm thinking mentally. So being able to perfect my own swing is what I'm trying to do. Um, and definitely just kind of pathway you like, you'll never perfect anything, but just kind of path. Like you can path, you can definitely path your way there. Um, you know, brick by brick, just kind of taking it, taking it slow and keep doing the same thing. Consistency is key, you know? Yeah. And it's all a timing thing. So one guy can be doing something and a lot of the a person's swing is based off of the timing. You exactly. know, what, what gets their swing going when the pitcher is at a certain point, Exactly. So whatever works best for you. Yeah. Um, so let's get into a few, uh, fans from the questions I saw, that, or you, you saw that I posted on Instagram the other day, asking some people. So what size glove do you field with and what size of bat do you swing? Yeah. Oh, so my glove, I actually just, um, I'm working with Rawlings now and the glove, I use a 11 and a half. Um, I use pro preferred and then a rev one X, which I'm starting to get kind of used to it, but I've always used a pro preferred um and i actually have actually here hold on i got a glove right now all right all right this is my this is one of my gloves this is a heart of the hod um this is a glove i used to use in high school it's 11 and a half um i like the colors i really like it i got it at pgs teal and tan which i like but then my bat i use a 33 and a half drop three um old hickory i swing old hickory sign with them so I swing the Nolan Arnauto model and then the Andrew McCutcheon model. Okay. That's What's model. the difference between, you know, uh, I think you you mentioned earlier that you swing swung a uh, Rawlings bat mm-hmm. versus an old hickory bat. Do you yeah. see the difference? In- yeah. So I, I like old hickory just because that's what I've, I'm most comfortable with. Um, I swing the Arnauto, which is a little bit more like inloaded. And then the McCutcheon is a little bit more balanced. Okay. Um, but the Rawlings bat I swung last year was like, it was a Corey Seager model in the barrel was like literally like this big the barrel might have been like this big but once you hit it on the barrel it flew like yeah. flew and i just I, that's the one i used um just because i like the color of it. i love that it was the teal it was teal okay um but the the old hickories i use now um i like the feel the barrel I like the handle a lot so those those are kind of what i'm what i'm swinging now cool and then what motivates you to keep working hard with all the ups and downs um i think definitely you know, a big part of it is my family, just my dad, um, kind of, you know, he put all this work in. So I think 
I think it's pretty it's fair that I put the work you know equally back into it. Um, but also the the fans and um, the kids like knowing knowing that they're watching me um, and they're trying to kind of do the same thing I am and my little brother especially um, he watches kind of everything I do so it motivates me to you know keep working hard so he can do the same thing and um, he can end up passing that back down and passing that down like I just want to impact everyone like kind of watching. Absolutely. And then walk off Homer or a game saving robbery in the field. A walk off Homer. That's like okay. not even, that's my, that was my goal in high school. I could not do it. Like I, I would had, I had three chances. One of them, I had a walk off single in the middle, which was so frustrated with. It was our last home game. Another one I had uh, like a walk off, like ball, like to right field, which was, that's what, that's the one I was mad at. Cause I was like, it was the same like spot. And the Just other one it. I popped up the third. Yeah. Popped in the third. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you'll get one of those at some point. Yeah, that's that's my goal. That'd be sick. And then let's see here. What, what's your favorite piece of Mariners gear that you've gotten so far? I have a bomber jacket. Okay. That, like I, That's like, that wasn't even like, I didn't even have to think about that. I have a bomber <laughs> jacket. It's actually right there. Okay. It's like a cream bomber jacket. Um, it says Mariners on the back. I think it's 1972. Has a patch on the side. Is that what um, the Trident? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I got it from uh, I got it from the the shop when we, when I was there, and I wore it to the game that night. And that uh, when I when they introduced us on like the jumbotron, I wore it to the game, and that was that was pretty cool. So I guess that leads me to another question: being in a packed T-Mobile park, what was that experience to be like? It was it was it was crazy because like everywhere I went, like people knew like people kind of knew why I was there. Um, so like I would go to the bathroom. And they would just be like, whoa, like, yo, congratulations. They're like, what? How did you know I did? <laughs> like, they didn't even, like, introduce me yet. But they, they kind of knew. So it's like the Mariners fans are really, like, like Mariners fans. Like, these guys, are like, are all would go, like, all out Mariners, all out Seattle teams. So, like, I love that. I love, like, loyal fans. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a passionate sports town, passionate city, especially for baseball with, right. you know, the team that they have up there right now and – uh, just seeing some winning, it definitely helps. Right. What's your uh, favorite jersey number and why? Uh, I've always worn seven. Okay. I've worn seven for since I was like two years old. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I think I've I've just always worn it. My mom gave it to me when I was like set, like two. So from there, I've every team I played, like every like growing up, I've always been number seven. Yeah. Cool. Right on. And then uh, a couple of your friends submitted questions. I, th I think they're your friends. Uh, they, they wanted me to ask if you're hopping on Fortnite tonight. And then I think it was Owen that asked why you never revive him. <laughs> because because um, Owen chooses to Owen chooses to test me every every time we play. So and and if Owen is watching this, um, I will not revive you. And <laughs> I will make sure that Frank knows. Uh, Frank is his dad, and I'll make sure Frank knows that I will not revive you. And I will not be hopping on tonight. I'm playing GTA. <laughs> there you go right on what's your uh twitch handle instagram handle youtube yeah so my twitch is my it's just my name ty pete like all lower cases and um youtube is also just ty pete and then uh instagram is ty uh dot underscore dot pete yeah yeah, yeah. so those are those are all my stuff but I, I try to stream as much as i can um but sometimes i'm just like, oh, like it's too late to even start a stream where it's just like i don't even know what to play anymore um, but I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it just because I, the same people are coming back. And then when, when different people come back or when different people come in, they ask questions that, you know, like the same people that have been in it, I've heard like hundreds of times, Yeah. but I got, I will always, I'll always like answer questions that people come in with just because, you know, I enjoy these type of things. I enjoy these podcasts. Like I enjoy, um, answering all sort of questions for fans just because if they want to know, like, I don't want to leave them hanging, like with the question they have. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, last question to wrap it up, Ty Pete off the field, you know, we hear that you stream, you play golf. Is there anything else that you haven't mentioned that you like to do off the field to, you know, take some downtime? Yeah. So I'm a big bowler. Like me, okay. I, so for me, it's like, if I start doing something, I'm going to like go all in for it. Um, so like when I started going in, like I got, I got really, I'm a huge sneaker head too. So like I got like, oh yeah, like right here. I have like okay. all of my shoes laid out and then um, everything, ping pong, 
Like me and my dad played ping pong. I think one night we played like maybe 40, 50 games to 21. So we're, we're, we're like competitive and, and he's like better than me at everything. Like he's like this much better than me at every single thing we do. So like bowling, we'll go first game. He'll bowl like a 210. I'll bowl like 188. And I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> so, but I, for Christmas, I bought, I bought me, my brother and him all like custom bowling balls. Awesome. And we bowl, we've bowled like unbelievable amounts of bowling in, in the past couple of weeks. But um, I'm really, I'm, I'm huge into every hobby. You know, kind of like everything except like outdoor stuff. That's not me. That's my brother. Yeah. That is not me. Like fishing, hunting, stuff like that. No, yeah, I would not. I don't want my hands dirty. Nothing. <laughs> but other things like racing games, um, driving, stuff like that. Like I, I'm a big, I'm big into every hobbies. Um, but I kind of enjoy it all. What's your uh, highest bowling game? Uh, two hundred and five. Solid. There yeah, you go. 205 is my highest. That's, uh, I had a couple, I had a turkey to end it off, turkey to start it. So I was, I was feeling good that game. I'm sure you've seen that Mookie Betts is a big bowler and he has like multiple 300s. Yes. And he's like, like good at everything. That's he's literally like in tournaments. Yeah. I want to, I don't even get, I don't get how he does it. And like <laughs> Steph, Steph and, and golf, um, like all these guys, it's, it's crazy. I'm just like, how could you even be that good at like golf? I don't, how do you have time to do that? Especially him. I don't understand how he has that much time to do that. Like, like me, like I have, I have a lot of downtime, um, but like he has so much stuff on his like yeah. plate and stuff. Like I'm like, but I'm trying, I'm trying to get, get a golf. I'm going golf tomorrow and Saturday. There you go. So I'm ready. Yeah, you keep at it. You'll break 80 at some point. Compete That's with your buddy. One thing I want to do. Yeah. I've gotten, I have 80, 83 is my best. So, and I told myself if I break 80, I'll buy myself a Scotty Cameron putter. There but you go. I just, a Scotty Cameron putty, you're not good enough. I'm not good enough for it. <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, regarding ping pong, I've heard that the uh, clubhouse in Arizona for spring training, that there's a ping pong set up there once you get to that point. There is. I heard it's really competitive. It's unbelievably, like Lazaro, <laughs> Lazaro Montes, he is like good, like dirty good. I'm going to start bringing my own paddle. Like I'm not using their paddle. I have to be at my home setup to be good. You know, like it's like a certain thing. Like I played so many games on my ping pong table that if I go to a different one, it just feels weird. But Bring I'm, ping pong I'm, paddling. I'm bringing my paddle next to next, uh, not semester, but next kind of year. And um, I'm going to go all out on, I'm going to make sure I'm going to call out Lachi too. I'm going to call him out. There you go. Yeah. Come in with your paddle and your briefcase and um, <laughs> I'm bringing my own table. Yeah. There you go. Have it shipped in. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Appreciate your time uh, today, Ty. Great conversation. I'll make sure to put all your social medias down below so that everyone can follow you. Of course. Um, again, thank you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you progress next year and best of, best of luck. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me.